Here the 20% reward income uh, inequality data base. Um, so we have half an hour, and then we are hoping to have some discussions about <coughs> this important uh, database. So, Gian, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Gian. Today, what I am supposed to do about the outcome is to talk about the database from the way what it is and uh, how we have come to where we are. And many of you may not have seen this database before, so we'll go over the database very quickly. And then we will see as to what uh, if you realize that this is like the old now, so the version that is on the website, so there is a uh, revision that is overdue, and we are in the process of revising it. And part of the idea of having this session today is to use the opportunity that we have of all of you being present to brainstorm on how we should go forward with the with the revision of the day. So uh, we do uh, look forward to have your suggestions on how to the next version of the way should look like. Okay, that's the first time. So let's start with what this way is about. So WIP, as you can see, is World Income Inequality Database. And uh, it actually started with the, the first question came later, but really the seeds of this start in the project of UNDP and UNDP wider uh, had in 1997, 1999. And it was uh, really asking, I think the question was, yeah, are the rising uh, in is, is it is poverty reduction incompatible with rising income inequality? And that was led by, and we were really honored and glad to have for the my present here, who actually was uh, the head of that project. And it's from this that in 2000 version one of the grid came. So it's essentially a outgrowth of the project. That that, that was done with you and with by you and by the And then in 2005, there was a major revision of this, and I'll talk a little bit about this uh, uh, later. And, and then after that, there were versions of it, but not major revisions, 2.B and 2.C. The one the version that is currently on the website of you uh, and wider is 2.C. It's essentially, uh, essentially a 2005 version, but updated. So this obviously means that uh, uh, it is 2013, so there is a great uh, urgency now to revise it further. Now in 2000 version, we have uh, data of 159 countries with 5,313 genies, but 2,351 country years, which means that there are a lot of uh, uh, repeat country years, and that is because uh, the some of the attributes that we'll discuss later are different. So some might be for the entire population, and some might be for the rural, some might be for the income, some might be for the might be consumption, and so on and so forth. So these are the different areas, but, and, and in all there are 53 30 periods. And there is also other attributes, other aspects of the distribution that is there in our database, not just the genie. It also has the size, the times, means, medians, and there's a second G, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, which is uh, in the version that is all on the website. So the the number of quintiles and the country that we have quintiles and decides for is not the same actually, it's much less than the number of countries that we have genies for, but they're there. And then we also have not just the distribution data, we also have data on other aspects of survey, for example, the bottom of the income uh, shared unit and so on. And the next slide will talk about that. To make sure that we, when we are comparing inequality across country or across time, we are not comparing uh, apples with oranges. So therefore, this description of what these genes mean is present. And that was, in fact, one, I think, uh, one of the major reasons why uh, this database was created in the first place. And then uh, finally, we also have quality ratings about the various genes that we have. And we have occasion to talk a little bit about that. And finally, there's a full documentation about, about the database on the website itself. So just to give you a sense of where the database is to be found, maybe I can go to the website and pull it up. <coughs> so this is a UNUI website. Under the search, there is this database right here. And then, so there's a documentation here, the, and, and there's a database right here. So this is in the form, it's an Excel sheet. And if you were to open it, it will disappear. Uh, these are the 
TV and the reporter TV, it's the second TV that I was talking about, mean x, y, and so on, we'll, we'll just talk about these various variables. This is how the data is available on the website. It's an Excel sheet and it has all the details about about the various other aspects of the of the genies and the information distribution data that we have for the different <coughs> here. The last one is about quality. Now if you were to go back uh, where we were, then the second thing before I, I go further about the other things that are there on the database, the second thing actually is uh, the genie that was uh, computed uh, by using a method that Charles Vaughan uh, uh, found or, or uh, in, 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 in wider. And what they do is that since the Lorentz uh, coordinates are grouped data, essentially telling you for different percentiles uh, what is the percentage of share of income, they ungroup that data and they find they have an algorithm which allows them to ungroup the data and then using the ungrouped data, they recalculate the gene. And uh, their paper, of course, is 2008 for the paper, I think number 16, uh, from the website, and uh, our website. And what this method does is that it allows you to arrive at the gene as if you had an ungrouped data available, as if you had more number of data available than just 10 points or 8 points or points. So how it does it is that it fits a, a, a long normal distribution to the parameters to the to the various uh, tolerance coordinates, and then having fitted the curve, it takes up let's say 100 sample points at different points on the on the long normal distribution, and then the sample values that you get, it readjusts the algorithm, adjusts this these sample values so that the mean of these sample values is same as the mean of the original Lorentz coordinates uh, data. So therefore there is a there is an ungrouping process, but uh, this ungrouping process protects the mean as it were, which means that you don't come up with new means. And that is of course the first step doesn't give you that, the fitting doesn't give you that, the second step which really involves some manipulation with the sample values, which allows them to arrive at these uh, new genes, uh, new uh, sample values, which give you the same mean. Then using these new sample values, they produce the new gene. Now, if you look at their paper, they have tried to check, evaluate whether this is a good method, does it work or not work, and they've done that in a number of different ways. One of them was supposed to, to start with the real data of 100, group them, find the gene, then ungroup them using this method, and find the gene again. And then they found that there's not much difference between the two. They've done a variety of things, and the paper gives more details about it. And it's by a satisfactory way of unmoving uh, uh, distribution. And so therefore, we have a second genie, uh, which is called genie right now, in the, in the, in the database of the website, which really is a genie that is cal calculated using this method. Well, other aspects that is there on the data, other than income distribution, uh, on our database, we mentioned is of course very important thing. What is the income definition? Now, by income definition, we mean basically it's whether it's income or consumption, and if it's income, then for the details of uh, whether it's earnings and, and so on and so forth, whether it's post tax, pre tax, and, and wherever possible, the improved in kind, home production, uh, owner of occupied buildings, and so on and so forth. It gives a description, full description of income and consumption, uh, and, and also expenditure sometimes. When, when, when the uh, if expenditure that is focused, which means, for example, in the case of durable goods, when the total money that is spent on durable goods is there, then, then obviously it's expenditure uh, version of this. But when you're just looking at the use value of the durable goods, that's consumption. So, in the, so that detailing is there in one column, and then there's income share of it, which is essentially as to the sample unit or the, whether the income is being shared at the household level or the sample unit is a person. And that is a sign that is given to. And then there is a question of unit of analysis, which means that, for example, if you have a household level data and uh, you have five people in the household, then obviously the per person income is, is not necessarily just a per capita income because of the fact that there is one middle scale in household consumption. So there are different ways of making sure that you arrive at a good sense of what it means to give a household income for a family of five or a per person level of welfare. And these are various equivalent scales that are used. So 
when the particular data that we have used is using an equivalent scale, then what that scale is, is measured uh, in, in our database. And finally, uh, very importantly, we give you a sense of what uh, a, a detail of what area of population and age coverage is, whether it's for all ages or rural, urban, total, and, and, uh, and total population or, or a subset of the population, and the currency of the reference period. So this totality of all these is what the big database is about. And it allows the researcher to compare like with like, if you like, and rather uh, just Combine different kinds of things based on different definitions, different uh, equivalent scales, different uh, configuration, and the research is able to uh, call out that particular set of numbers that are comparable and in doing the research. So that is the uh, broadly what the database is about. Now, one point that we do mention in the database is the quality rating. Now, the quality rating is based on two things. But what is the income concept? Whether it is known as to what the income concept is and whether that and what's the survey quality. So, so if the uh, about the income concept, if the underlying income is in unit and the income concepts are not known, then it is not considered to be good quality. And, and if the coverage of income concept is not comprehensive, then again it is not good quality. Similarly, survey quality, the survey coverage of the questionnaires and data collection technology as to uh, uh, some effort is put into looking at these aspects of the survey of which the GDP numbers are based or the size of and, uh, and, and an assessment is made as to whether it's a good quality or bad. So, so let's say if you have a very long recall period in case of consumption survey, then it's a little bit worse quality than one which is not so long uh, recall period. One which involves a single interview versus one that involves multiple interviews, and especially in poor countries, uh, in that case, one which is better quality. So based on these, we have one, two, three uh, quality ratings that are assigned to every uh, country uh, there that we have data on. And then the documentation, there are three ways that we should be the, 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 the database uh, uh, presents the documentation. One is of course the database itself through these various variables that we talked about, which gives the details of what the uh, income distribution figures actually mean and what it pertains to. And the second, of course, is the user guide. Uh, which is on the website, which we briefly saw when we went to the website, which gives you full detail of every variable and, and all these various concepts that we're talking about. And finally, there is a report uh, to country information. Now, because of the fact that the structure of database allows you to give only so much information, not more, and, and oftentimes you want to know much more than that. And to facilitate that, what we do in our database is to give for each country the details of the surveys of which. Uh, uh, especially about surveys of, uh, which have resulted in the, the numbers that we have put on the website. So it gives you more details about the sampling that we use, the ways we use, and so on and so forth, sample size, and other details that might be of use to the researcher to give you a fuller sense of how much value or how much uh, weight to put on the data that we have. So last year was in 2005, and uh, what was done uh, in that revision was essentially that uh, the overlapping estimates were deleted and the sum uh, numbers were based on limited coverage which basically means that they were covering very small, let's say, you know, just a few cities or uh, let's say 28 major cities and so on. If there was, especially if there was data also on a large urban, uh, let's say, population then this, this was limited. So it was like proving of some of these things. Some of the old <laughs> estimates were replaced by new ones. And this is especially true of LIS database where new database new numbers were available and they replaced those numbers with the new estimates that were there. And then some new, of course, the expansion of the database happened in the country and some new data ideas were added. And finally, there was some change in names of variables and, uh, and, and variable names. And now, as I was saying, that it's time for us, this was 2008, it's time for us to take a look at, at what the way should look like. And so therefore, in the process for the last few months or so, we are engaged in this exercise. And the first thing that we've done is to also come with this data version of this database, which for many people is, uh, it, it allows them to manipulate or they can always take this Excel to data as far as it's, but this is a directly uh, manipulated or more manipulated version of data uh, that is there, which will be there alongside Excel. Then there's expansion of data set in terms of more countries and more data have been uh, over time, the last few months collected, so we have more countries, we have more GDs and more uh, country years. Of course, all this uh, is still at last count, this number is changing, and, and we 
you still have to go back to these numbers and see that some of them is reliable the scrutiny. But right now, this is the uh, in-house uh, database has these many genes in these many countries and so on. And once we have done through the process of elimination, many may not survive, and we have added some more, uh, many more may come. So that's an experiment we have set. And then uh, we are proposing, and uh, this is still, of course, uh, uh, a drawing board stage, proposing that some of the variable things uh, we realize may not be self-explanatory in the current version of the database. For example, there's a variable called country tree. Now, what it really refers to is a tree um, isoport of the country. So we can instead of just call it country so so call it country tree, we can call it country code. This variable mean x, y, x, y, x slash y, and most collapse people do did not find it immediately obvious to what it meant, x, y. So that, that has to be removed. And what we mean essentially is mean of survey mean of the variable one of the number from the genie was based or other income uh, distribution numbers are based. And similarly, median, instead of mean, median x, y, which is the current thing, would be just mean. Reference period is one variable right now. So the currency and reference C currents, C U R R E F current, which basically combines with this currency and reference period. So it will be like dollar per month, dollar per year, and so on. So obviously we can easily separate the two. So we have currency and separate variable, reference period separate variable. There's source one and there's source two. Now actually source two is not the second source. Source two is giving more detail about source. Sometimes it gives the name of survey. And the source will give you where the data we got from. Let's say if I get the data from LIS, then that's source one. And source two will tell you what survey it was based on. So instead of to make it a little more transparent and clear, instead of source one, we just have source. And instead of source two, we have source comments. Then the second gene is just called a gene. And the, the other gene is reported gene. It's the gene that comes from the database or that was computed uh, in the early stages using a, a, a Bobcat software. But the second gene, just for a gene, and it's quite easily uh, confusing to people as to what does second gene mean, given that there's another reported gene standing alongside. And second gene, nothing but is, as I said, is based on the Sherlock's one algorithm. So we might as well call it SWGE or, or some such name, which makes it very clear that this is a gene computer using a particular methodology. Then there is, of course, the issue of income definition. Now, of course, uh, income, uh, I, I originally it was meant to be, I, I don't know the history, but word income inequality database. And then we had consumption coming in as one of the ways in which welfare is measured. So it looks slightly odd to me to call it income definition as income or consumption. So we might as well call it, we could call it welfare definition, which will make it which can either income or consumption rather than income definition having income and that's slightly awkward about that. So these are the various changes we proposed in the name of variables, this expansion of the database is there. But there's a bigger uh, change that has been proposed, which is the next one. Which is, to, which is to make this data uh, accessible and to a wider set of audience. Right now, I think the original audience was actually researchers who were working on income inequality and were uh, hard pressed to find all the data in one place in sufficient detail for them to be able to make sense of what these numbers actually mean. But that was the original purpose, and I think it has served us very well. But I think we can go beyond that, given the amount of interest that is there in the subject of inequality around the world especially for the last few years. And there is also a, I think, a little lack of a, a authentic source on, on, on these numbers. So in public domain and in common politicians, public uh, policy makers, press, and so on and so forth, uh, I, I, I don't think they're careful enough to distinguish between a consumption genie and an income genie and, and between the different kinds of income, different kinds of uh, unit of analysis, and so on and so forth. We can produce some of those things based on our own for public consumption. So if you want to, if you want to reach out to this audience, it will have to go beyond the Excel sheet or this data uh, version of the Excel sheet. It will have to come up in the shape of the government, the the journalists, and the NGO, given this audience, it will have to come up in the shape of some data visualization, which means that we, we present numbers uh, in the form of graphs and charts and so on and so forth, and many of them, in fact, now are in circulation. Uh, um, uh, some of them have gone viral uh, in, in the time of uh, uh, by Wall Street movement, uh, especially about the US income inequality. We don't know as to how valid those numbers are because they're coming from individuals who are uh, excited about the subject and who are mostly in the game of uh, public.
public advocacy, but this would provide some kind of a regular basis to those, uh, those arguments in public domain if we were to produce all these things based on our understanding of what is comparable and what is not comparable. So that is one data visualization. The second is knowledge products, which basically means that we produce little, uh, uh, if you like, briefs on what is the, what is the plus of the or the negative of the what a loading of the needs and what loading of the doesn't mean. Because some of these things are not really very well known, uh, and even among somewhat uh, uh, senior levels of policy makers. A loading of the uh, or is considered to be an unmitigated good without quite realizing that it doesn't necessarily capture a improvement and a lower rate of the distribution and so on and so forth. And so, so there are many such things that is available in the literature, but that is not accessible to the general public, which is nonetheless using these things. So we might as well provide a platform and provide these products so that people who are talking about these things are sure and we are sure that they are talking with some degree of understanding of these concepts. So there will be a whole lot of issues around inequality that uh, we can think of on which we can provide uh, uh, correct and previously uh, uh, verified uh, products. And the third is that we can also then contribute to the debate in some sense. We can bring to notice, uh, bring to the public domain some of the things that we may have noticed in terms of how the distribution has changed or what has happened, which may have this, which may be available in the literature at some level, but which may have this public scrutiny or public debate and discussion. So many things that will happen in some countries, let's say in the inequality in Latin America is going up or going down and so on and so forth, but people are not sufficiently aware of it, then we could talk about it and we could talk about, let's say, as to what policies, especially in Latin America. What policy have brought down in terms of inequality in those countries? So there is a certain contribution we can make to the debate itself, rather than just providing input to those people who are engaged in the debate. And this this could come through our own our own products. Interesting fact that I think of it. And and of course, then once we do that, of course, sky is the limit as to how far we want to go and how far we want to engage. And that's a separate question that Julie Wilder has to take a call on as to how much of an activist role it wants to play. This uh, game, but definitely this is the direction in which we can go. So these are all the thoughts, essentially, and we haven't yet uh, sort of revised it. And, and we were, as I said before, hoping that we could use this opportunity to to engage with you and to get a sense of how you would like uh, with it to be, uh, and, and, and just some, some general uh, and some specific also thoughts that we have in mind to share with you. Now. And the other thought that we had was that now this is somewhat uh, uh, you know, dated to have 2008 database in 2013. Now the reason is that if you decide to have this major updation only once in four years or three years, then people will lose interest in the database because they go elsewhere. And, and, and we will lose a chunk of our own sort of uh, uh, readership uh, if we do not update regularly. Now, it is a fact that you know every month, every two months, there is some new country, some country which is coming up with some new data. Now, that need not wait for the next revision for to find place in our database. If tomorrow will not be come off since or China, it can become probably the future, we will update it here. So, that's another thought that we have that instead of having these versions 2008, 2013, and so on, we should have a regular version. And then, of course, we have to have a basic question of, of uh, how we are going to ensure that people who have used the database on day one are uh, able to use it, are, are able to see the difference that is there between that database and the database on a given day. So we have to think about uh, of, uh, maintaining previous versions and so on and so forth. And I think that's going to be uh, uh, an easy problem to tackle, but that's a problem that we must address when if and when we do this output like this regular revision. But this regular revision is possible only if we have the same thing which is that we have a regular uh, data flow coming from uh, statistical offices and other uh, uh, other institutions that are dealing with these statistical offices. Now, in the past, both experience has been that uh, it is not very easy to get this information in this kind of detail that we need in the time frame that we have in mind, and very easy. So, we were thinking of trying to establish some kind of a <coughs> long-term institutional arrangement, some kind of moral of understanding with various social offices and, 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 and let's say, uh, regional government offices who deal with these uh, offices locally, so that we are able to get the information on a more level basis. In fact, 
fact, in a very more advanced version of this, we could even have them input the information into our database so that we from where they are, uh, and we you know what relationship we have with them and, and what kind of capacity they have. Okay. So, so it is, it is uh, a, one of the thoughts that we have is to how to develop this partnership in the long run so that we are able to effortlessly update this information on a regular basis. So our ultimate is a public good. It's a good which is definitely, uh, we don't charge anything for it, so we don't exclude anyone. And, 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 and definitely the non viable consumption because if one consumes the other, the other one consumes. So therefore, it is a public good in almost two cents of the And therefore, I think it's something that we expect and other uh, uh, national social offices to uh, to work with us and to find it, uh, uh, what they're willing to work with us and we hope that to build that relationship so that we can have a more regular vision of this uh, this database. And, and finally, there's one part that is also internally, <coughs> is to whether we should confine ourselves just to income and consumption or should we go beyond. Should we talk of more inclusive, uh, more variables that would broadly define inclusiveness of growth. And this is a, a subject that has, a, as you see, that has been receiving a lot of academic and, and policy makers' attention over the last many years. And as these new measures come up, should we or should we not uh, expand this to include those things? That's another question that we have to get. So these are the various things that we have uh, been thinking about, and and it would be uh, very helpful if we have a suggestions from you on uh, any of these things that we mentioned, or any other suggestions that we may have, so that we can provide this public database to a wide variety of, uh, of audiences.